For this video, we're going to go ahead and do what's called a textured resist. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a texture in the background of our bisquare tile. So we're taking a tile that has already been fired one time. We're going to use this bubble wrap texture as like our background color and texture. And then we're going to use contact paper. It's kind of got a sticky side to create shapes or a silhouette of something. And we're going to place that on our bisquare tile under glaze over it. And what's going to happen is wherever we put the contact paper, um, wherever we put our contact paper shapes will remain this textured color. Okay, so I'm going to choose two colors to work with today. So I'm actually going to use blue and green, I think, in terms of underglazes. And the first thing I'm going to do is, one, I'm not gonna pop my bubble wrap because other classes need to use it, okay? So I am going to take a larger scale brush, okay, and paint this on here. It does not have to be perfect. So it's just gonna create a texture. In fact, I think I'm gonna do only half this or a partial amount, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this on my tile, turn it face down, and put some pressure with my hand on it, hold it steady. but put even pressure on it. Try not to move the paper and peel it up, okay? So I have this really nice texture there. I'm gonna do it one more time. I accidentally painted this green. I was gonna, thinking I was gonna do something else, but I'm not. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Again, you can see how the plastic is, is kind of repelling the underglaze, that's okay. Just wanna make sure we have enough on here. And then I'm gonna press it on this bottom section. And again, the goal here is to hold the bubble wrap steady and just apply even pressure to transfer that underglaze texture to your tile, okay? Kinda of looks like bubbles or an underwater thing. I don't know, probably because it's blue. Okay, so this is what I have so far, okay? This you can then um, dab off on a piece of paper towel, okay? And I would say eighth grade, you don't need to coat this because you're just wasting the underglaze, all right? So this is what I have um, to start just with my texture here. I like it, I think it should be fine. And I'm gonna set this aside, okay? Now, each of you all are going to receive a piece of contact paper, okay? So this contact paper typically has a side that has paper on it with like some measurements and some lines that you can use to hack it. The other side is often a color. Sometimes it's a pattern. Sometimes it looks like a textured wood grain or something like that. You can use either side of this to draw part of your design, okay? Now I had some base shapes for a design I was working on in one of my other videos. And so I borrowed some of those shapes and I traced those, okay, onto the contact paper and cut them out, okay? So all I did was sketch this directly onto the contact paper, kind of like so. And I'm probably gonna give you all a piece that this is the size of your tile, okay? And then I cut that out, all right? So I have a whole bunch of pieces that are already cut. Okay, so this is a contact paper shape. This is actually part of the contact paper shape, okay, the inside sort of negative space piece that I popped out and I was like, okay, that looks cool. I think I might wanna keep that. So I'm gonna use that as well. And then I used some of the shape tracers to cut out a variety of circles that I'm going to use as well, okay? So I'm gonna create like a little design on my, um, my bisquare tile, okay? Now, once your bisquare tile is dry, okay, so that underglaze has dried. Mine is pretty much mostly dry. You do want this to be dry before you put the contact paper on, okay? What I'm going to do is make sure I'm working on a piece of paper towel, like so, okay? And 
Now that this is dry, I'm gonna figure out where I wanna place my design. Okay, now your design pieces, so your shapes or whatever it is you've chosen to, um, whatever you have chosen to create, you're thinking of it in terms of silhouette, okay? So it's gonna show up sort of just as a general space, okay? Um, it's not gonna have a whole lot of detail, and I think you'll see uh, what I mean as we go. All right, so I'm gonna take a moment and just kind of mess with some of these shapes and figure out exactly where I want them to go to create a pleasing design. All right, I'm liking the way that that looks so far. And I'm also liking the way that looks down there. Yeah, I think that's cool. I, think I would like it if I had one more shape, but we're gonna work with this for now. Okay, so I've arranged this how I want it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start by peeling off the back, the paper backing of the contact paper. Now this is difficult, okay? So if you're like on the struggle bus with it, it takes a little bit of time. Best way to start doing this is kind of gently uh, pressing down one of the corners or a couple of the corners and using your fingernail to peel off the paper backing. You can get one of the corners, try some of the other ones. You can even kind of press down an entire side. Okay, so I was more successful with like pressing down a chunk of it, kind of like this, if y'all can see that. And then I'm um, peeling up the paper backing. Now I'm gonna put this sticky side down on my tile. And again, it's important that your tile is dry. Okay, and I'm gonna take some time placing this on there. And I already forget how I had it. So you can also change your mind. So I'm kind of doing a gentle press to start and then I'm gonna press it a lot harder, specifically around the edges, okay. Voila, okay. And I'm gonna do the other shapes as well, okay? Now, from there, I'm gonna think about another color that I want to use that is going to be the color of my background. It's gonna cover over the extra space that's not contact paper, okay? So again, to peel these shapes off, I am kind of peeling up a section of it, peeling off this paper backing and really pressing down the edges. So I'm kind of pressing down a section, holding part of it down with my fingernail, peeling part of it back with my other finger. And again, this is difficult, okay? So you're gonna struggle with it a little bit. You will survive. Press this down. Do the same thing here and here, okay? Um, for my glazes that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use underglaze, okay? So I've already used a light blue underglaze so it has no shine to it. It's gonna remain largely that color. And I am going to, um, with the top coat I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a dark green. I'm gonna start with one coat in one direction and then do the second coat in the different direction. All right, and I think you'll see what I mean in just a moment. I struggled a little bit with that piece, but I came out on the other side. Excellent. Okay, last shape that I have here. I'm gonna press this down. And gradually peel it up. And just kind of take a moment to place it. I press it. There we go. So before I add my underglazes, I'm just gonna make sure all the edges of these shapes are pressed down so I can get a nice clean release a little bit later on. Okay, 
So this is what I have. Um, at this point in time, I'm gonna make sure I have my underglaze set and ready to go. And I am going to use a, a larger paintbrush to paint this on, okay? Now, as I paint this on, I am gonna do two coats. It's always a good idea to have your piece dry between coats. It does not take very long to dry between coats, so just kind of keep that in mind. Right now, I'm doing a vertical coat. You'll notice that the contact paper is actually repelling the underglaze, and that's okay. So remember, wherever the contact paper is, it will remain the color of the tile, which in my case is that kind of creamy white color and also the blue. Now, if you notice that you're starting to add your underglaze to this and then all of the sudden you feel like your contact paper shapes are starting to peel up, press them down before you proceed. It could be that the under layer of your piece is not quite dry and or you did not stick everything down as hard as you should have maybe. All right, so I've got my layer one. Um, I am going to let this dry, okay, before I do layer two. 